Neil Haugen here for R. Neil Photog. You can also find me on the Premiere Pro Adobe user to user forum with my R. Neil avatar and face. You can also fairly soon find me with R. Neil Video Graphics. I'm here talking about the brand new release of Premiere Pro CC by Adobe. They're just going to call it Premiere Pro CC now. They're not technically going to call it by the year names, but as you noted, it still shows the year name up here in the corner. And also, these are the, going to be the 13.x builds. So, what's new? One of the most fun and for me important things that's new in this are changes to the Lumetri color, including we now have a whole series of very useful curves that can save a great deal of time and multiple layers of Lumetri that we used to have to do because of being able to use those rather than doing HSL curves. Well, let's see how it works in operation. I have this job that came in. Well, as you can see, there were some issues and they needed to use this shot what can be done. It's 8-bit media, it's not even 10-bit media, so that you have to worry about artifacts, that sort of things. We can't do anything about this area where there's blown out detail, but let's see what we can do with him. The first thing you do with color is to neutralize your image. If you're neutral, then you can make it look like something, but if you're trying to match up various things and they're not neutral, matching becomes almost impossible. So the first job of a colorist is to match tones. Looking at this here, I want to match my color first. Some colorists will match their luma brightness values first and then neutralize color. I like to neutralize color because that changes the outside ends of your luma frequently on the three channels and so I'd much rather get the color neutralized than have to neutralize tones, neutralize color, go back and neutralize tones a little bit. What I do within Lumetri is I go over to the Creative tab and I use the Shadow and Highlight Tint wheels down here. I'll start with the Shadow wheels and I'll look for something in the shadow areas that I want, looks like it should match all the way across. And I've got this notch here and that notch that goes up a little bit is probably this shirt in here. So what I'm going to do is just use the start with a shadow and let's move that up and see if we can't match those notches. That's that's pretty good. Okay, now let's try the highlights. And I'm, what I'm going to be doing is right above that, so it's probably him, you've got this spike, that spike that's higher up into green, and this one that's lower down into red. So I'm going to try and match those. Go towards red and uh, there we are, that's closer to match, but notice that we have this out here. I'll bet this is his face tones and it's out there to the side. So I'm going to go ahead and cheat that over towards the red orange and bring it out and see if that doesn't, and that gives us a good skin tone. So I think we'll go with that there. So far we've got quite a bit of change. Just doing that balancing, we've gone from here to there. We still have a muddy uh, image with a lack of contrast, kind of a feeling of haze over most of this. So we've got some tonal work to do. Before I get over and do the tonal work, I like to get the saturation out so that I'm only looking at tones when I'm doing color. So let's now with the saturation out, we can go over to the, the base side. I'm going to bring the whites down, obviously. And uh, it's right about the point where they snap. We'll be doing adjusting that later. I'm not worried about it exactly. Let's bring up some contrast on, and notice that's changing the contrast on his face. I'm going to bring the highlights up a little bit, and although I don't use uh, blacks much, let's go ahead and take the shadows down. There, I think that's a lot better. Yeah, and looking at it, I think that's probably all we'll worry about there for right now. Again, we're not going for perfect. We just want to get much better. And again, going to full screen. Yeah, that's definitely an improvement. Okay, now we want to move on. We have some color problems here. Look at, we have some excursions way out there. Compared to the skin area, those are 
really taking attention and also wasting time and and uh, the, some of this is probably in the skin because he's got some yellow and some red tones in his skin and we want to try and see if we can unify that so let's go over to the new curves area and all these sweet new curves the circle I used to have for just general color uh, intensity saturation is now just a box like the rest of these let's sample a skin tone and start work slide that over so it's got a bit more view now that is probably pretty close to right along the skin tone line there and that's maybe some of these red ones but we've got all this area over here we need to work at so I'll go ahead and make some number of points over on the line clear over in through the cyan area so let's see this is probably a skin wow notice when I click that you see we have the bright orange at the top and the faded out to nothing that's showing that what we're doing is up is more saturated down is less saturated so see if you look at the skin tone line right here and watch this while I move the saturation here and up and I'm moving that area out so we move that out just a little bit to saturate that now this stuff off here in the yellows let's see what we get here okay that's some of it but let's get okay oh that's out there nicely and maybe we can come back here at another point pull a little bit more of this in I really like that uh, now let's come over here oh yeah we're pulling we're pulling that in nicely now so we've it, it's a little bit more filling around volume there I like the shape of that better and it's looking better to the eye we've even neutralized quite a bit these posts back there doing that let's move on down to the hue versus hue this is going to save me <laughs> quite a number of hue sat layers uh, mask layers on it let's again sample skin tone area there going to add an outlier here what we're going to do with this is these are the red tones of his skin and you see when I click on it below if I pull it down I go into orange I can go towards red or magenta if I go up and watch see the tones up in here as I pull this down those will come closer to that skin tone line these are the yellow ones in this area over in here and watch what happens when I push that up and those go over and line up with the skin tones that is practically magical work and it really improves the skin color let's go down now to hue versus luma he's still actually got almost too much saturation and I'd like the face to be a little brighter and that's really easy to handle here I'll come back I'll sample his face again and put this into an area where I can work at it let's again add a couple more outliers out here and notice when I click this time you have color below and you have brightness above I'm going to lift a little bit and we're trading a little bit of chroma a little bit of color detail or information for brightness those up and maybe take this one up just a little bit more and turn it off turn it on you see we've got his face brighter and the excess saturation is removed another one that can save me HSLs human eyes and film all rolled off saturation in the shadows in the dark areas and in the highlights video keeps it a lot more than film or the human eye so to give a more natural look and one we're more used to from having done, been done in film set a point about a third of the way in from the bottom this is the dark areas this is the bright areas and this is saturation down saturation up I just pulled saturation down in the shadow areas of the shirt and I pulled it down in the highest area so that it smooths it out in the upper areas so where have we come we have gone from that to this 
it's looking a lot better but you know there's still a lot of detail in his eyes and actually looking at this it would be nice if we could go a little sharper wouldn't it well we can let's go back to the creative and let's just go ahead and increase sharpness and let's bring his face up I want to see that shirt so we'll do 50 percent bring it over here let's watch that shirt as I work with the sharpness oh yeah that is much better there the lines on his shirt are really starting to pop now bring it up and I'm going to bring vibrance up just a little bit too to bring the lower saturated parts of the skin up okay now much better but I still want to bring his eyes up here there is another new feature in Lumetri this time and that is notice this little drop down I can add a Lumetri effect I can rename well let's rename this and call this base and then let's add a Lumetri of color effect and I'm going to rename that and call it eyes so now on this next layer of Lumetri let's work on the eyes coming over here to the effects control panel and then down to the Lumetri layer eyes I have a mask option of free draw bezier I can set points so let's bring him back up to 50 percent monitor so that we can see his face well and right about where the tone starts changing on his nose and then set a point out here and I'm going to set points to put a mask around this dark area around his eyes I'm going to come down and immediately just raise the feather see that dotted line on the outside edge is going out now to about his hair I want to make sure we don't really see this so make sure you got a, you know, a good sized feather on that now come back over to, to Lumetri color but we still see the mask right just click over there clip back here on the clip and it's gone and we don't see the mask we see the effect of the mask so what we want to do is lift the eyes we can go to the basic correction you can do this in color wheels I'll just do it in the basic correction and let's just take pull the whites up White's correction is a gain. It's just lifting everything proportionally up as you go up to the top. And I'm going to pull the highlights up just a little bit. I'm going to raise the contrast some also. And just in here, I'm actually going to use the blacks. I don't normally use the blacks that much. It's kind of an odd control. But by pulling that down a little bit, that gives me that extra contrast. Bring the whites up lights up and now let's turn this layer off see how dark and dull they are and now that's looking a lot better let's kick back off for the uh, size and go to fit and uh, let's go even to full screen how dark the eyes there and how they pop out here and when you look away and you look back you don't see any effect of that mask at all it's just that his eyes are a lot lighter so the next thing we need to do though would be to run a mask all the way across there because see we've got the mask but it's only for this one frame so now what we do is come down here to the mask one and the mask path track selected masks forward you can work with it from any place in the image I just started at the first frame it's very handy now I can say mask forward click on that and it begins tracking the progress across the screen you can watch it go it's going to take a while you can watch it play but rather than take your time for this I'll simply stop this currently because we can come back over here and I can show you what the final effect is like look at the eyes in this. I'm going to go full screen with this one. Look at the eyes, the brightness of the eyes, the highlights, the color of the eyes showing there. So you can watch this and see where we have come from. You 
vastly improved from what we were at the beginning. That's what you can do in the new Lumetri Pro just using the basic correction, creative, and the curves. We didn't even go into color wheels or any of the other HSL or any of the others. That's just this. I've timed it. I can do this correction when I'm not talking about it in five and a half minutes. So it's a wonderful, wonderful uplift to the capabilities of Lumetri. I hope you enjoy it as much as I know I'm going to. Neil Haugen, arneilphotog.com, and soon to be Arneil Video Graphics. Hope you enjoy this. Catch you next time.